Good morning, and we welcome you to this pinnacle of proclamation known as the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, located at 1141 Campostello Road in the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. The zip is 23523. We welcome you uh, to be a part of our broadcast on this morning as we come across Facebook Live this morning. We are just so grateful that God has blessed us once again that we can come and celebrate his holy and righteous name. And we thank God for what he's doing in the life of his people and to the life of his church. And we are so grateful this morning that we are able to gather together once again. So we praise his holy name. Here at the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church on this third Sunday in the month of September, it's Family and Friends Day again. We do realize that we have to do it a little differently than what we have, we have done it before. Normally, we have taken the time during the week to come to worship. We've taken the time during the week to uh, have a cookout there out on the ground somewhere or in the park. But this year, we were not able to do that. But the Lord still has blessed us that we can come together, that we can still celebrate all over again. We're just doing it in a different way. Every, time, every now and then, you need to do things just a little different way. And God always makes a way out of no way for us. So we were blessed again that we are here, that we can celebrate family and friends. And we want to thank our chairperson once again, Sister Sheila Hill Moore, uh, who has been leading us as our chairperson each year for Family and Friends Day. As we open this morning, I want to change up just a little bit. Uh, there are some individuals that we need to pray for this morning uh, that really need our prayer and we're praying this morning for the Wilson family as we would abbreviate our service a little bit this morning as we would go and say farewell to Sister Gwendolyn Wilson at 1115. So we ask prayers for the Wilson family. This morning we also want to lift up Brother Leo Williams who's had somewhat of a rough week this week and prayed with him on last night and I'm asking that our church family will join together and lift up Brother Leo Williams in prayer. Also, we're asking that we lift up Sister Iris Teen Cooter, lift her up in prayer. Sister Iris Teen was in the hospital, has been in the hospital for a few weeks, and I did talk to her this morning. She's home now. They did a surgery on her, and she's home, so we thank God for that, but we want to lift up Sister Iris Teen in prayer. Also, I want to ask that we pray for uh, my first cousin, uh, Edith Swift. We know her as Elaine. Her understand that her daughter... Uh, is in the hospital this morning. Uh, don't know the condition right now, but we want to lift up her daughter. Her name is Kashina. We want to lift up Kashina this morning. And then finally, I, I want to lift up the Brown family, uh, the family of Brother Kenneth and Kendall, who are members of our church family. Their brother passed. A brother, his name was Graylin. Graylin passed, and he was funeralized on yesterday. So we do want to lift up all of those names that we have given this morning in prayer. Won't you join me as we pray at this time? Our Heavenly Father, we pause this morning to say thank you once again. We say thank you for mercy, thank you for grace. We say thank you for being our God and for allowing us just to be your children. We do realize, God, that we cannot have church unless you come. So come Holy Spirit, come Heavenly Dove with all of your quickening power and breathe on these cold hearts of ours that we may do thy blessed will. This morning as we invite you into this space called Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, we're asking that you would have your way in your people on this day. And we pray this morning that all the names that we have called, we lift them before you and we place them on the altar right now. And God asking that you would hear our prayer and that you would heal those who need healing this morning. We pray, God, that you would lift up those who need lifting up this morning. We pray that you would comfort those that who need your comforting power this morning. Do it now in the name of Jesus. I know you can, and I know that you will, because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God that provides for us, and we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. So we've entered today that we may worship you in spirit and in truth all over again. So we ask now that you hear our prayer. And we ask now, God, that you lead us in our service, that all that we do and all that we say 
would bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all believers said amen, amen, and amen. It's always good to just to be safe in his arms. Listen to the music this morning.
what a blessing it is to be safe in his arms. I don't know who arms you're in, but I know that I'm in his arms. He has holy arms. He has strong arms. He has delivering arms this morning. And it's good to just to be safe just in his arms. I believe that's, that's a shout right there this morning. I don't know where you are, what, you, what you're driving down the road, but that's a shout right now to know that he's kept us safe through the pandemic right now. Safe in his arms. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. As we move along in our broadcast this morning, we just want to take the opportunity just to say thank you to some people of our church who've been so faithful in your giving. Uh, Sister Sheila Hill Moore is going to come and speak to us in just a moment. Uh, let me just do this before Sheila comes. I do want to say um, happy birthday to Sister Lee. Uh, she's having a birthday uh, coming up on this Wednesday. This Wednesday is going to be her birthday, and Boston is going to do something real, real nice that he's never done before before. I don't know what that is, Boston, but you, gotta, you better make it real, real nice. So happy birthday, Sister Lee. I want to say happy anniversary to Dig and Charles and um, Sister Dig and this Tamika Johnson. They had an anniversary on last week. Amen, amen. And you know some folks just, you know, get on Facebook and just do whatever they got to do. And okay, so some of y'all probably saw them on Facebook out there. Amen, amen. So we want to say happy anniversary to you. I'm going to decrease now, and I'm going to ask uh, Digging this Sheila if she would now come and speak to us on this morning. Good morning, MLBC and friends. Today, as we celebrate Family and Friends Day, I think about the church family, our church family, and the preparation we would be making for a big week. This time, we are to declare new things in a new way. We're not only doing new things in a new way, we're starting new things in the best way. First of all, I want to thank God every day, every day that we have a family and a church home to come to. Start by remembering the good times and stand by each other even in the bad times. Put a smile on your face, put love in your heart, and good thoughts in your mind. Learn to trust God. The journey you might not know about, but it always works out. Remember you're alive, you're blessed, and you're good, and you're grateful. God has spent his precious time on each one of us, and we ought to be thankful for that. Thank God each and every day that you wake up. Thank God each and every day that you wake up. Last but not least, learn to love one another because the greatest commandment is love. At this time, I would like to thank my church family, my pastor, for all the donations, all the support I got during Family and Friends Day, even though we're doing it in a new way. God is still in control in everything we do at every moment. I would like to thank each pew captain. I would like to thank my backbone, Sister Ronnie. I would like to thank my family and every family of this church, because without you, I am nothing and I can do nothing. Please have a blessed and wonderful week. And again, Mount Lebanon is doing things in a new way. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Sheila. I think we got a little family day presentation. Is that right? All right. If you're watching on Facebook, we got a little family day presentation so you can see some of the families. Come on and enjoy.
that sometimes we just got to look back and smile to see what the Lord has done just to tell just to tell God thank you amen amen and amen and I do want to just say thank you to all of our members whether you're giving online whether you're giving uh, bring it to the church or you're mailing it in thank you so much but I do want to also just take the opportunity to give you an opportunity just to shout a little bit uh, you, you know I know that we were talking about uh, you know during this time because of uh, the pandemic that we weren't going to possibly ask anybody to give anything special for family and friends day but many people said no pastor no Sheila we want to give anyway God has still blessed us so we want to give but let me see if this shouts you a little bit last year our goal was fifteen thousand dollars and last year we made our goal for the first time at fifteen thousand and on yesterday Sheila called me and said pastor I, 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 I don't even have all the money yet but we've already got more than twelve thousand dollars okay that was on yesterday and she said I have some more money to give so we just want to thank the members of our church family for being so faithful and giving uh, I heard somebody say a long time ago you can't be God's giving no matter how you try but the more you give the more he gives unto you amen amen come on pray with me and we're gonna go ahead and get started this morning with the word with the word of God Father, thank you again for the privilege that you have provided for us that we can come, but then for the privilege you have provided for me that I can share your word once again. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall never pass away. So clear my thoughts, clear my tongue, clear my heart, that I may do that in which you've called me to do, to share the unadulterated gospel of Jesus the Christ. That now the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength, you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this family and friends today, I, I want you to go with me uh, to the book of Luke. The gospel is recorded by Luke chapter 10. If you go down to verse number 38, and I won't be long this morning. Luke chapter 10, verse number 38. I'll read from the New King James Version this morning Luke chapter 10 beginning at verse number 38 10 38 hear the words in the writing of Luke he says now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are weary and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. You may take your seats. As you, amen for the reading of the word. <clears throat> I want to share this morning real briefly from the subject, faith, family, friends. Faith, family, friends. As we gather again for another Family and Friends Day, Family and friends gathering is all about coming together, being bound together. Uh, even though we have to, may have to reconnect a little differently this year than ever before, Family and Friends Day is still about coming, being bound together, connecting together. Uh, our human experience is rift with all sorts of family and friends gatherings. Uh, sometimes friends come from college to come together, back together again. Sometimes families come from near and far together again. Or oftentimes people who have made it, become successful in life, come back home just together again. But for whatever reason, folks come back and together again. It's always good that we come back to be able to gather together again. 
But as I think about family and friends that are here at Mount Lebanon, I do realize that we would have been, like I said before, we would have been out on the grounds on yesterday in the park somewhere having a great time. But we weren't able to do that on this year. But yet, we are still grateful that God has still blessed us. But as I think about family and friends, oftentimes when I think about it, there's a good side, but then there is a challenging side. Take, let me take my time just for a moment. There's a good side, but then there's always a challenging side to it. Because when we, when we come together, oftentimes, sometimes people come with the wrong motives when they come. Priest Bobby. People come with the wrong motives when, 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 when they come. They don't come with the right motive when they come together. And that's why Paul challenges, challenges us from, from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14. Hear what Paul says about a challenge to us. Paul says in verse 12, he says, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. What, what Paul really says, the challenges that we have sometimes, is that when we come together, we, we don't always key off and love each other the way we ought to love each other. And that's one of the challenging issues of, of life, is that because we have our own differences and we go about our own ways about doing things, sometimes we really can't come together to love the way we really ought to love. And I want to tell you today what Paul really says from the text today is that you got to learn sometimes to put up with us. You got to learn to put up with folks sometimes when you don't want to put up with them. Well, well, well Pastor, why, why should I put up with folks when I don't want to put up with them? You, you got to put up with folks. You know why? Because somebody put up with you. That, that, that's good news. Somebody put up with you. Matter of fact, let me just go on and tell you and I'll break it on down for you. You ain't always been where you are right now. So somebody, somebody hear me this morning, I want to just tell you, you ain't always been all of that and a bag of chips also. There, 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 were time you ain't, there were times when you went to school, you carried your lunch in a greasy brown paper bag with grease stains on it. There were times in your life where you ain't had but one pair of shoes to wear during the week and one on Sunday if you had that. There were times you couldn't get your hair done every week. There were times in your life you ain't have... You ain't have a whole wardrobe full of clothes where you had to select. You had an outfit for this day, one for that day, and you switched up the next day to try to make that always been the same. You ain't always been all of that. But you got to learn how as family and friends to put up and to love each other. Why do I need to love each other? You got to love each other because you can't tell me that you love God and you don't love people. Because if you love God, you got to love people because God is a lover of people. And you ain't bigger than God. And God loves you in the midst of your mess. So why can't you love somebody else in the midst of their mess before they get their stuff together? Preach, boy. Listen, you got to love each other. Well, well, when I come to the text this morning, he, here it is that Jesus has now made his way the down to, to this little village. Here, here he is. He's come to Bethany again, and, and he comes to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And here he is as he comes. Jesus comes and pays a visit to their home, and they treat him like he's family and friend. Watch it now. Stay with me. He, they treat him just like he's family and he is a friend. Well, well, in the midst of all of this, while he's there at, at the home, there's a discussion that comes out between Mary and Martha. Two sisters now have a discussion, and their discussion is, is that Jesus, why is it that Martha, Martha says, why am I doing all of this and Mary is just sitting there with you? Why isn't that she won't come and help me? Uh, but, but, but Jesus says, hold on for a second, baby girl, because you, you got this thing wrong. You, you, you concerned with serving. She's about... You concerned with serving. She's about sitting at my feet to get the word of God. And the thing that's the most important is not how you serve, but how he serves you and how you get the word and how you live by the word. 
Jesus says, I want you to get it right. But, but here from the question I want to lift from the text this morning is simply this. Why do I need faith, family, and friends, preacher? Well, why do I need faith, family, and friends? Well, well I'll, I'll tell you real quickly and I'll be out your way. Now, number one, the, the, the reason you need faith it is because faith fuels your focus. Watch this, stay with me now. Faith fuels your focus. You see, faith helps me to get to where I'm trying to go. When I can't see, faith tells me to keep believing while I'm moving forward. Faith is what fuels me to keep moving forward when I really can't see my way. It is a faith that I have that what's on the other side of the door, I'm going to get over there when I I'm going to get there even though I don't think I can get through the door, but my faith says I can get through the door because God can make a way out of no way and God can open up that very thing that's between me and my destiny. Can I park right there to tell somebody today that, that when you have the faith and your faith is not in you, but your faith is in God, God knows how to get you where you want to go because your faith fuels your focus because if I can keep my focus, and my faith is in place God knows how to get me to where God is trying to get me to be here it is in the text this morning it is that you really have to have faith you see we really we, we, we usually think of faith in the terms of getting answers to our prayers and receiving from God the things that we that, that we want to get from him and, and, but that's okay but, but there's a more important reason for building up your faith and that is because faith is about pleasing God. Faith is about pleasing God. That, that's why the Hebrew writer in Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What pleases God is your faith. What displeases God is your lack of faith. See, God wants you to have faith not in you, but in him, because the more faith you have in him, the more you will believe that he can do that which nobody else can do. And see, when I feel like I can't get to where I'm trying to get to, I can't get what I want, I don't need to focus on anybody else. I need to focus on him because he did my faith fuels my destiny and I've got to understand today that as long as I've got faith, faith can move mountains out of my way. How you know, pastor? Because I've seen the faith of God work in my own life and when doors were closed in my faith, faith opened up doors. I've seen God move mountains out of my way when mountains tried to block my way. I've seen God lift me up not to go through the mountain but to go over the mountain. I've seen God when I was empty it broke, 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 busted, and disgusted. But God knew how to provide for me and sent somebody in my way. Faith fuels my focus so I don't give up to get to where God is trying to get me to be. You, you see, from the text this morning, Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to his teaching because Mary had faith to know that the word of God could change anything. That's why Mary sat there. She sat there because she realized that it wasn't so important about serving the meal. It was about being, about serving Jesus. That's what she was concerned about. So Mary sat there when she, she could have been helping Martha, but, but her faith in Jesus fueled her focus. You see, when your focus is fueled by your faith in him, he allows you to run on high octane. <laughs> when you're your faith it is surely is fueled in, in, in him, listen, he helps you to run on high octane. You see, see sometimes the, the, the reason our cars ping and knock because we're running on low test. And when you should have been running on high test. And, and there are some cars that, that you can't put 87 octane in. You got to put 93 octane in. But when you put 87 in it, it'll ping and clicker. But when you put 93 in there, that bad boy will go on down the road. I stopped by to tell somebody today, your faith needs to run on 93 octane. And it'll run on 93 when you let Jesus be the focus of your faith. Uh, so, so listen, well, wh 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 why do I... Why, why, why do I need faith? Because faith fuels my focus. It keeps me on my focus. But, but then the question now is, why is it that I, 
I, I, I need family, Pastor. Well, well, well you, need, you need family because family fortifies your future. Stay with me for a little while. Family fortifies your future. F family is what gives you the strength to, to go forward, give you the support to, to go forward. And, and when we rely on family and family helps to lift us, it can push us, <laughs> propel us to our destiny even quicker. The, the issue that affecting the black family right now is it, because the family, the black family is struggling so much right now. Well, why is the black family struggling and why is it so tough for the black family right now? Well, well let me just give you one quick glance. The, one, one of the reasons the black family is struggling so much right now is because the head is not in place. That the head is not in place. That, that, that is the father is not in place place. You see, the blessings of the family come through the father. And, and when the father is not in place, sometimes the blessing is removed. And oftentimes, even though the father might be there in the house, the father does not act as the father, and therefore the blessing will not come to the family because he's still out of place, even though he's right there in the house. Here it is this day that you got to understand that the challenge for the black family is, is that we got to put the father back where the father belongs. He has to be the head and not the tail. Oh, preach for a little while, Bobby. Well, listen, listen. Here's a challenge that we have in life. Our challenge right now is that we got to get the father back in place where he belongs. You see, our challenge, most of all, is to examine ourselves and to take responsibility for the mistakes that we've made, innocent or otherwise, and for the injuries that we have caused. We, we, must, we must first confess these errors to God and then seek the forgiveness of, of those we have harmed. In, in the reconciliation, we must forgive ourselves and others. Then reunited, we must walk in love. We, we, we got to walk in love when we reunite ourselves. What, 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 what's that all about, preacher? Well, well, well that's what, what that's all about it is bringing the village mentality back to the community. Bringing the village mentality back to the community. We have to stop playing the blame game, blaming other folks for our mistakes and take full responsibilities for ourselves. You, you see, I heard somebody say a long time ago, I am because we are. In other words, I can't be who I am without you. And I am because of we are, which means we are all together. Can I just take you back just for a little while to tell you why the, why the, family, why the family fortifies your future? It, it's simply because a long time ago in the black community, everybody knew everybody and everybody looked out for each other's household. As a matter of fact, everybody looked out for everybody's children. And when children got out of place, there was somebody way down the other side of the street street were way, oh excuse me, I'll give me to say something I wasn't supposed to say right there, were way down the end of the street and when you got out of order, they had the permission of your family to whip your behind, then send you home and when you got home and they told you what you did wrong, you got another whipping then because we had the village mentality going on because we looked out for everybody and we corrected those children that got out of line. Nowadays, nobody wants to correct our children and we're wondering why we got so many killings and shootings going on in our neighborhoods. It's because nobody looking out for anybody's children and you can't speak to somebody's children because they always think you try to they think that you are trying to be their parent but somebody need to be your parent when you don't have a parent at home to be the parent that they're supposed to be Amen. listen here it is family fortifies our future here it is Jesus was family to Mary Martha and Lazarus so when he went there they treated him just like he's family what, what, what do you mean pastor it, when he, they treated him like he was family you know when, when, when your family when, when you go in the house you ain't got to put no airs on when, when, when your family when you go in the house you can take your shoes off even though your feet smell 
When you're family, you can go and sit on the couch and then put your feet up on the couch because that's what family does. And when Jesus went to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house, Jesus was there with them to fortify their future, to let them know that if you've got faith in me and you can keep your focus on your, with your faith, then I'll be able to help you to fortify you to your future. I'll strengthen you to get to where you're trying to go. But then I'm done. One more point. It's why do I need family and I need faith? Well, I told you, 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 need, you, you, need, you need faith because faith does what? Faith fuels your focus. But, but you need family. Why? Because family fortifies your future. But, but lastly, why, why do I need friends, Pastor? Well, well you, you, you need friends because friends help to fan your flame. Okay, <laughs> I wanted to play with that for a little while. Friends help to fan your flames. Look, look at what it says right there in verse number 38. It says, now as they, went, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. In other words, what, what, what the text really was saying right there was not only was Jesus going to Mary and Martha Lazarus house, but Jesus had his boys with him and they were going. That's what the they is right there. Jesus had his disciples with him. So which is simply, what, what simply, simply says right there is, is that when, when they go into the house now and, and Martha is cooking, Martha has to now cook a large meal because you now have about 16 people there in the house that she now has to serve. You got the 12, let me prove it to you. You got the 12 disciples. You got Jesus, that makes 13. Then you got Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, that makes 16. Y'all got that? That's 16 people that they now have to feed. 16 hungry people. But you got to understand today that, that Jesus comes now to them and, and Jesus brings his boys because the boys are like family and the boys are friends of his. Uh, I want to tell somebody today that, that Proverbs 18 and 24 says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Everybody needs a friend. I don't care who who you are, whether you're lotty, daddy, anybody, everybody needs a friend because you need somebody to help to push you along. You need somebody to fan your flame every now and then because the world will get you down. The world will throw you down and keep you down. But if you got a friend that is closer than a brother, your friend knows how to help you up to keep you on the right road. And every now and then all you need is just somebody to fan you just for a little while, to stroke your face for a little while to keep you going to where you are trying to go. Well, as I get ready to leave you now, I, I, I'm reminded right now here in America that this thing called racism is really affecting us in a big way. This thing called police brutality is affecting us in a big way. And, and now with all of this going on, we show sure enough need faith, family, and friends. As a matter of fact, can I tell you why? I, I know it, it's prevalent today. It's simply because if you watch the news here in America right now, even though we don't always know everything that's going on, but there are at least seven black mayors who are under the age of 40 years old. Come on, stay with me now. Black males that are less than 40 years old who are the mayor of their cities. There's a mayor in Birmingham, Alabama, the mayor in Richmond, Virginia, the mayor in Shreveport, Louisiana, the mayor in Little Rock, Arkansas, the mayor in Jackson, Mississippi, the mayor in Montgomery, Alabama, and the mayor in Kansas City, Missouri. There are seven, at least seven black males under 40 years old, and these boys have understood now that we need to be friends because there's so much going on so much tension going on. So they've come together to form a brotherhood because they realize that they need each other. And I stopped by to tell somebody that just like these boys need somebody, we need somebody also. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but as I close for you today, you don't need Lottie, it, Dottie, it, and anybody, you need somebody to be there to be a friend for you that stick is closer than a brother. Well, I, I, I got to leave you right now, but, but I, I got to understand that even in, in the midst of the bad times in which we live, you still got to have faith. You still need family, and you still need friends. And even though the world may not be going the way that we want it to go today, I, I, I heard the word of the songwriter say, I got to count my blessings. 
blessing. What, what, what do you mean count your blessing, pastor? The song says this. It, it says count your blessing. Name them one by one. Count your blessing and see what the Lord has done. I don't know where you are today. Uh, you might not know where I am today, but I'm still counting my blessing because I've got my faith. I'm counting my blessing because I still got family. I'm counting my blessing because I still got some friends that I can call on in the midnight hour. And for this family and friends day, as I leave you right now, if you got faith the size of a mustard seed, you know, that faith can help you to move mountains. If you got some family, family that can stick by you, that will help to lift you up in the tough times of life. They will help to move you to your future. If if you got some friends who will stick close to you that when the world knocks you down your friends will come and lift you up I stopped by to tell somebody you can make it in this life and I don't know about you but my faith is not in my family my faith is not just in my friends but my faith is in the one called Jesus of Nazareth who picked me up one day who turned me around who placed my feet on solid ground that's where I have have my faith today and as long as my faith is in Jesus he'll be a brother he'll be a sister he'll be a mother he'll be a father for me in the midst of these dark times is there anybody here that hear me this morning that know that you gotta have some faith but you need some family and you need some friends I don't know who I'm talking to today but Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And Mary, Martha, and Lazarus realize that Jesus can be family and Jesus can be friend. You, you know how I know? Because if you go to John chapter 11 and you look at the first couple of verses right there, when Lazarus got sick, who went to him? Martha went and said, your friend Lazarus is now, <laughs> is now sick. Ah, but then Jesus came later to his rescue, even at his death. I want to tell somebody as I go today, stick close to your faith. Hold on with your family and allow your friends to even fan your flames today. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you as we move to the next service today. We thank you so kindly for being a part of our worship experience here at Mount Lebanon on this morning. And I pray that the word has blessed you. And I pray that if you feel like the word has blessed you and you want to give, go to our website and you can give right there. But most of all this morning, I'm not so concerned about your giving. I'm concerned about your soul. I'm concerned that your soul would be anchored in the Lord. And if you do not know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, this morning I ask that you just pray this simple prayer. Just, just bow your head right where you are and say, God, I come unto you. I am a sinner and I desire to be saved. I, I believe in you, Father, and I believe that you had a son named Jesus and that Jesus lived and Jesus died, was buried, but he was, but he was raised again on the third day morning. I believe in your son, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my life and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. If you do that, my brother, my sister, you've got a new family because you are now part of the family of God. And then when you come and connect with the church, you will now get some new friends to go along with your faith in Jesus the Christ. God bless you and may you have a wonderful day. May you have a wonderful week. And we look forward to you coming to be back with us again on next Sunday at 10 a.m. as we worship God in spirit and in truth here at the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church here in Norfolk, Virginia. God bless you and have a great day. To everybody here before you go, by your heads. Let me the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord let his countenance upon you and give you peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. <laughs>